Space travel, according to many astronauts, is a life-changing experience. I think we could say John Northcott to every astronaut. It's a life-changing experience. Much. And now we're getting results from a study that NASA did that tells us about how it changes life in a whole different way. NASA has been looking at the Kelly brothers, Scott and Mark, the twins, who have given science really a once in a lifetime opportunity to figure out what space travel does to our bodies. Absolutely, because we had a genuine control group, identical individuals, identical DNA, two 55, now 55 year olds, the pride of Orange, New Jersey, one circling the earth for 340 days, the other 400 kilometers below on earth, and each of them taking a series of tests. One a little easier because he has gravity. Scott uh, Kelly talks about trying to take a blood sample and getting globs of blood, being able to grab them out of the air. He said he eventually got quite good at that. But hundreds of tests, of course, Scott Kelly arrived back on Earth a number of years ago. This has taken scientists and hundreds of them uh, over uh, several teams uh, analyzing all this data. And there it is. There is Scott on the left and uh, his brother Mark on the right taking them years to get to the point where they are able to uh, release this information coming out in the journal Science today. So a number of things that they found, and of course they always say the answer to a well-asked question is yet another question, and that's mm. what we're getting out of this. Lots more questions, but a few interesting uh, data points, uh, and we're going to talk telomeres. Okay. They, those are... We you know, we don't do that enough we on a regular really. basis. Life so is so busy. Remember when we used to have so much time to talk about telomeres? Uh, there they are, the ends of the chromosomes. Now, in humans, as we age, those telomeres get shorter. Hmm. In space, Scott Kelly's got longer. Interesting. And this really is quite remarkable. Now, when he returned to Earth, he got shorter again. So they're beginning to think that perhaps, uh, yes, could you live longer if you were in space? Maybe. On the other hand, you'd have to stay in space for that to happen. Let's talk the immune system as well. Okay. When you move even to another country for the first three or four months, you don't get sick because your immune system is on high alert. And then at a certain point, you sort of relax and then you do become susceptible what's out there. Now, he only came and encounter, uh, in, in, uh, encountered about a dozen other uh, astronauts who were there with him. So he didn't get exposed that much. But in the test that they did, the immune system remains about the same once you return back to Earth. The other aspect are the eyes, and his eyes actually changed shape. Fairly typical, we find. Mm -hmm. So again, no real surprises there. So they call it a neuroocular syndrome because of the lack of gravity. The shape of your eyeball uh, mm -hmm. actually changes somewhat. But here's the aspect that really has them amazed and perhaps a little worried. This is the cognitive abilities. So he took a series of tests all the time, testing his uh, reflexes and his ability to remember. He's doing that in space. He Mark is doing that at the very same time on the ground below. Yeah, and then he comes back to Earth, Scott does, and finds that he's not as smart. He doesn't do as well on the tests. And that has been uh, continuing on since then. Possibly disturbing. Does this mean uh, that you get stupider in space or you get stupider as a result of the experience of coming back to Earth? They don't know. But there's other aspect is that he came back to Earth. He was doing television interviews. He was having trouble sleeping because, let's face it, he's trying to get used to a whole new environment again. And it, it could be that as well. So they just don't know. Wow, so much promise. Yeah. Life, uh, you know, long-term travel in space but perils as well, and obviously uh, maybe changing preparation for going on those long trips to the moon, to Mars, and so on. So we'll talk more about that. Come on back. Okay. We'll look more at the, okay. uh, at the study. Thank you very Cheers. much, John Northcott.